Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, alors, nous allons faire ça tout de deux. Extending, accepting, and politely declining invitations. On y va. Mais, premier, nous commençons avec un peu de culture. So we're going to start with a little bit of culture. This painting s'appelle Le Déjeuner des Canotaires. Does this look familiar to any of you? I actually think it's so dreamy. Or are you even familiar with perhaps the, the artist, the French artist? Well, if, if Auguste Renoir sounds familiar, you are correct. Famed for his sensual nudes and charming scenes of pretty women, Auguste Renoir was a far more complex and thoughtful painter than generally assumed. He was a founding member of the Impressionist movement. Nevertheless, he ceased to exhibit with the group after 1877. From the 1880s until well into the 20th century, he developed a monumental, classically inspired style that influenced such avant-garde giants as Pablo Picasso. I love the Impressionist um, Museum at Le Gare in, in Paris. It's just so amazing. And I don't know, there's just something really about his painting. So the one that we are looking at today was completed in 1881 and is presently a part of the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. So not too far from us if you wanted to go see it in person. Its name translates into English as Luncheon of the Boating Party. The painting is a representation of a group dining on a balcony at the restaurant Fournais, overlooking the Seine. In the town of Chateau near Paris, the restaurant was a favorite haunt of the artists and features, and, and featured in several other of his works. So what I'm going to show you guys now, um, so this is the one that we just looked at, Bal du Moulin de la, uh, Moulin de la Galette is actually his most famous one, but I just wanted to give you a ballpark range of how much these paintings cost. So Le Déjeuner comes in around $47 million. Oh mon Dieu. Oh my goodness. And his most popular painting comes in at $187 million. Like that is beyond my ability to even wow. Wow. So, you know, very interesting. This is French painter Auguste Renoir, who was responsible for the Impressionistic movement. So, on y va avec la leçon d'aujourd'hui, extending, accepting, and politely declining invitations. So, a casual way to invite someone to do something is to use the expression ça te dit de or ça vous dit de. So, les exemples. Ça te dit d'aller au cinéma ce soir? What do you think that translates to? Ça te dit d'aller au cinéma ce soir? Do you feel like going to the movies tonight? So that was the informal using ça te dit. This prochain example, the next example, we're using the formal or if you were talking to a group of people. Ça vous dit d'aller prendre un café dans le quartier? So, as you can see, le ça vous dit d'aller, do you feel like going? So, ça te dit means do you feel like? Um, so, if you took Spanish, tener ganas means to feel like doing something. So, tienes ganas de aller, um, ir al cine? Do you feel like going to the cinema? So, ça vous dit d'aller prendre un café? Do you guys feel like getting a coffee in the neighborhood? So, also, you could say, so this is just a different way of saying, this is saying, do you feel like? Another way that you could ask somebody this question is to veux aller au cinéma ce soir? Of course, there's lots of different ways we can ask people questions. And so, what do you think this one says? Tu veux aller au cinéma? 
do you want to? So it's the difference between saying, do you feel like, or do you want to? So um, a little bit of a difference, but either way, the, the question gets across. Vous voulez prendre un café dans le quartier? Same thing. Do you guys want to get a coffee in the neighborhood? And so um, depending on preference, you're definitely going to hear either one of these options. So to accept, you can say, oui, je veux bien. Yes, I'd like to. Oui, ça m'a dit. Yes, that sounds good. One of my favorites, pourquoi pas? Why not? Oui, j'aimerais bien. Oui, j'aimerais beaucoup. Yes, I'd like to. Yes, I'd like that a lot. Avec plaisir. I'd be happy to, with pleasure, was is what it would translate to. Volontaire. Sure, you bet. Oui, bonne idée. Yes, good idea. To ask someone... To ask if someone feels like having a certain type of cuisine, you say, Ça te dit de manger chinois ce soir? Or, Ça vous dit de manger chinois ce soir? Do you feel like eating Chinese tonight? To politely decline an end of invitation, you can say, Désolé, je ne peux pas. So what do you think that means? Désolé. Je ne peux pas. Sorry, I can't. Also, um, if you're really going to be speaking um, like a navid, native, you might even say deso. They even short desole to deso, je ne peux pas, or je suis deso. So sorry, I can't. So on y va à pratiquer. Oh mon Dieu. Okay, un moment. So I'm going to have you all translate the following five sentences. After you're done translating, we'll go over the answers and practice some responses together. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to do that, and then we will continue to practique. Okay, so numéro un, do you feel like getting a coffee? Ça vous dit d'aller prendre un café? So I did it in the formal. You could have also said, Ça te dit d'aller prendre un café? And I should have had a question mark here instead of a, a period, but um, just pay attention to that. So mine's in the formal, but you could also have done it in the informal. So how would we say, yes, I'd like to? Oui, je veux bien. Comment dit-on « why not »?« Pourquoi pas ?»« Bien fait. » Numéro 2. Do you guys feel like getting a drink in the neighborhood? Ça vous dit d'aller prendre un verre dans le quartier? So this one, I did use vous because do you guys. And so that means I'm speaking to more than one person. So les réponses, yes, I'd like to, or I'd like that a lot. Comment dit-on? Oui, j'aimerais bien. Oui, j'aimerais beaucoup. Comment dit-on? Yes, good idea. Oui, bonne idée. Numéro 3, do you feel like going to the movies tonight? Ça te dit d'aller au cinéma ce soir? Comment dit-on? Yes, that sounds good. Oui, ça m'a dit. Comment dit-on? Why not? Pourquoi pas? Numéro 4. Do you guys feel like eating Mexican tonight? 
Ça vous dit de manger chez moi ce soir? Oh, I should have put Mexican. So mine, I kept as chinois, but make sure you guys had Mexican. Como dit-on? Sure, you bet. Volontaire. Como dit-on? Yes, good, good idea. Oui, bonne idée. Et numéro cinq. Do you guys feel like eating escargot? Ça vous dit de manger escargot? I'd be happy to. Avec plaisir. So, speaking of escargot, do you know what escargot is? Or are? So, escargot are snails. Um, and so, and this is a delicacy in a couple different countries and consumed frequently. So, what country eats the most escargot? Spain. I was so surprised by this because for me, escargot is synonymous with French cuisine. And so for some reason, I assumed, especially being a Spanish teacher and being to Spain so many times, I've never eaten escargot in Spain. Um, and they're called caracol, but, um, I definitely thought they were French. So just for you guys to see the numbers here, Spain consumes 16,000 tons. Like I can't really wrap my brain around 16,000 tons of snails. Um, but that is quite the number. Morocco comes in second. France comes in third and Italy comes in fourth with 2,100 tons. But these tons, these four countries account for nearly 69% of the global consumption of escargot. And so if in your head you're saying, ew, um, you know, this is a great time just to talk about cultural awareness and what a practice is to somebody else in their culture um, that may be different from yours or something that you may think um, strange, you know, it's really important to have cultural awareness. And the definition seems to be in the word aware of culture, but cultural awareness is having the knowledge of the existence of multiple different cultures with different attitudes and worldviews. While cultural sensitivity means the acceptance of those differences and accepting that one's own culture is not superior. So um, not thinking you're better because you don't eat snail or if someone offered you snail or escargot and you'd say, ew, gross that wouldn't be good cultural awareness. And so I'm actually going to show you all a video of me. I tried, so I'm a reformed picky eater and I really love to talk about that because, um, you know, learning a language has really expanded my palate for the better. Um, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone and I'm so happy. So this past May, when I was in Paris, I tried escargot for the first time. And so I'm going to show you that video. Do you all think that I liked escargot or I didn't like it? Well, let's go see. So I actually... So I actually really enjoyed the escargot. I didn't really bite on the snail too much. I just kind of swallowed it and it's covered in such an amazing basil, olive oil, buttery sauce that that's really the flavors that you taste. And so I'm really happy that I expanded my palate again and tried escargot. Would I try it again? Absolutely. Um, would you try escargot? Okay. Well, um, until the next lesson, bonne journée et bon appétit.